In this video, I'll show you how to factor by grouping. In question number one, you'll notice that the expression has four terms. One, two, three, and four. And you'll notice that the first two terms both share an A in common. And the second two terms both share a three that's in common. So what we can do here is we can factor out these two and factor out these two individually. Let's start with the first two. Factoring out an A gives us B plus four. And in the last two terms, factoring out a three, a positive three, gives us b plus four. So we've gone from four terms down to two terms. You'll notice something special about this expression. Both of these two terms remaining have a b plus four that's common. So I can factor out a b plus four, leaving me with a plus three. And that expression right there is the final answer. In question number two, it looks very similar to one, except the signs are a bit different. Once again, both of these two terms have an A in common, and these two terms both have a three in common. So I'm gonna factor out an A from the first two, leaving me with B minus four, and I'm gonna factor out a minus three this time, leaving me with B minus four. The reason why this B becomes positive is because if I left it as negative, that would mean that this term, which is currently negative 3b, is positive 3b. So when you pull out a negative factor, be mindful of the terms remaining within the brackets. This time, I'm going to factor out a b minus 4, leaving me with simply a minus 3, and that is your final answer. In question 3, we're asked to factor x squared minus y squared plus 2x plus 1. And you'll notice that this time they haven't been grouped together for us. So what we have to do is reorient some of these terms so that they are similar. Now notice that this is x squared and this is 2x. They both share an x, so they can be grouped together, plus 2x. And then we have minus y squared plus 1. Now we can factor by grouping. These two both have an x in common, leaving us with x plus 2. And these two appear to have nothing in common. What we have is 1 minus y squared. Technically, I mean, if I move this over and this one over, I have 1 minus y squared. What's special about these two terms is that this is a binomial representing a difference of squares. And I have a video dedicated on this. So this 1 is a perfect square, and so is this term. y to the power of 2 is a perfect square. Let me demonstrate. The square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of y squared is y. Now, since this is a difference of squares, we can rewrite it in this way. 1 minus y and 1 plus y. So I'm going to take this and replace these two terms with that. 1 minus y and 1 plus y. Now, this is not the only way to factor this. You could also have factored it, leaving it the same way. Since we've already had a discussion on a difference of squares, you'll notice that these two terms represent a difference of squares too. x squared is a perfect square, and y squared is a perfect square. So we could have rewritten this as x plus y, x minus y, plus 2x, plus 1. That is another option. And a third option could have been to group this, this, and this together, which would give us a quadratic trinomial. And here's what I mean. x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus y squared. These three terms represent a quadratic trinomial. What two numbers multiply to 1 and add to the middle coefficient of 2? 1 and 1. So multiplying these two, I get 1, 1 plus 1, and I get 2. So I can break this down into two brackets, x plus 1 and x plus 1 minus y squared. This expression, this expression, and this expression are three possible options to factoring the original. And so there you have it, three examples on how to factor by grouping. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, visit our website at studyforce.com. We're an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.